Hey, did you know that there are definitely times when you need to back off from sharing the gospel message with others? Didn't know that? <laughs> Stay tuned for Bible study number 157 called Pearls and Swine. Hey there, everyone. This is uh, Pastor Mark Pierce with uh, Church Requill. And as you can see, I'm uh, trying a little bit of an experiment this morning. I love September mornings, especially when they are as cool as what they are today. And uh, so I thought, what the heck, I'm going to come out here and enjoy a really nice walk and maybe take you along with me. So let me know if this works for you, especially those of you who are the podcast listeners. You're not getting the benefit of this uh, nice walk. Hopefully you can hear it, hear it well. Today we want to take a look at Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. So uh, if you take your Bible and turn to that, just one verse, and it reads this way. Do not give dogs what is holy, and do not throw your pearls before pigs, lest they trample them underfoot and turn to attack you. Now this is one of those verses that frankly kind of just stick out because it just seems so unusual here in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount. So let's take a look at a little bit of background, first of all. I think that'll help us. It won't give us all the answers that we need, but it will definitely help us a little bit. First of all, I have talked to you before about the idea of chiasms in the Bible. Uh, what I call the Abba, right? A-B-B-A. Sometimes when you take a look at things in the Bible, you want to look at them in the order of Hebrew poetry, not necessarily in the way that you and I would read. And I think we see a chiasm here. For example, we see the idea of the dogs, giving dogs what is holy. That would be the A. And then we would see the idea of throwing your pearls before the pigs. That would be the B. And then we see the B prime, which is lest they trample them underfoot. And then we see the A prime, which is they turn to attack you. Now, the idea of turning to attack you, don't know if you have ever seen a pig attack you or not, but I don't think that's what this is talking about. I think that turning to attack is talking about the dogs. So the pigs trample, the dogs turn and attack. The other thing that I think we need to understand and take a look at here is the uh, concept. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Good to see you. Um, the other thing we need to take a look at here is the, is the idea of the dogs and the pigs. We definitely don't want to look at this in the same way that we would in our 21st century American mindset because, uh, you know, <laughs> if you hang around with any of my daughters long enough, you know that they love their dogs. Well, not true in the first century Jewish mindset. Uh, dogs were something that was degenerate, something that was contemptible. Dogs were wild. They were definitely not pets dogs were scavengers. They would eat anything. In fact, to give you some idea of how gross dogs were considered, dogs would even eat carrion. Now carrion are birds that would eat, you know, roadkill. So in essence, what, <laughs> what dogs would do is they would eat what eats roadkill. Uh, pretty disgusting. There are two different verses in the Bible that give us a concept of how disgusting Jewish people thought of dogs we see the idea of Proverbs 26, 11, and also 2 Peter 2, 11, talking about dogs returning to their vomit. Now, I've seen a dog return to his vomit, and it's not a pretty thing. <laughs> uh, so this is kind of the idea of how disgusting a person would be if they're considered to be a dog. Probably the only thing that's worse than a dog in the animal life of the first century Jewish mindset would be that of a pig. <laughs> you know, a pig was definitely considered to be unclean. Uh, Jews could not eat a pig. It was the most unclean, the most abhorred of all animals. So here we have this idea of dogs and pigs being totally disgusting. And the proverb that we see here in Matthew chapter 7, verse 6, is that we should not give to dogs and pigs, <laughs> that which is holy, that which would be considered precious like pearls. 
Now the question is, <laughs> what are the metaphors? Because these are metaphors, right? The question is, who are the people who are like dogs and pigs? And what is it that is precious, that is holy, like pearls? And this is where I think it gets a little bit tricky with us. Because even if we know all the Jewish background, and we know how to read Jewish poetry, it doesn't necessarily tell us how we should understand the people who are dogs and pigs, and what it is that is holy, what it is that is pearls. Um, I think it's really the message of God, and it's the idea of being able to share the good news with other people. Now, what would be the, the good news, right? It's the, the news of Christ and the fact that he died and that we can have a relationship with him. But not everybody is going to accept that message. Some people are going to trample it underfoot. And even worse, like dogs, some people are going to turn and attack. Hi there. How you doing? So what would be the solution for this? I think this is one of those places where you take a look at the context of the passage. What comes before this verse, if you remember from our last Bible study, is a conversation about the judgment and how we should not always judge others. But clearly here is an exception. Here is a place where we are to use some discernment in our in, in wisdom in dealing with other people. There is a balance that I think we are being provided here to the judgment text. Warren Wearsby writes, Christians must exercise discernment, for not everyone is a sheep. Some people are dogs, or hogs, <laughs> and some are wolves in sheep's clothing. We are the Lord's sheep, but this does not mean that we should let people pull the wool over our own eyes. <laughs> you know, I think the real challenge for us is going to be in applying this text knowing who to apply it to. The danger is to apply this to whole people groups. I think instead we should use the reactions of individual people to this gospel message as to whether or not we continue or not. Even Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 7 tells us that there is a time to speak and that there is a time to be silent. When we see people who trample the message who turn on us, when we see that we are then in the presence of swine or dogs who don't know or who can't accept the holy things of God, then I think we are to keep these holy things, these pearls of God's wisdom and God's good message back for another time, for another place, and for another person. One of the reasons why I think this is true is because we definitely see this concept of teaching in Paul's writings. I don't have time to go through them all now, but if you take a look at Acts chapter 13, verse 46, Acts chapter 18, verse 6, and Acts chapter 19, verse 9, you'll see three different times where Paul begins to ex tell the good news of the gospel of Christ, and then, when it's not accepted, turns around and goes to another people group. That's the way we should be. Open-minded to everyone, but careful about how we proceed based on the reactions that we get. Hey, our lesson today is not to prejudge. Our lesson is not to be prejudicial. Our lesson, though, is to be very careful about those who are dogs and those who are hogs. Hey, thanks a lot for joining me today. Have a good week.